I'm gonna take these off, I feel can you see the reflection? Maybe not. 220 subscribers, can we just talk about that for a second? That's amazing, that makes me so happy. That damn dog. Anyways, I'm so excited about this. I, this is great, I got 220 friends. So if you haven't been here before and you don't know who I am, my name is Jess, I'm a Canadian Sparky slash electrical apprentice. But yeah, I'm so happy you decided to join me. We're not talking about tools today. Um, if you don't know, or if you don't follow me on TikTok, I'm in trade school right now. I'm only about halfway through, but it's a level one trade school for electrical. And there is so much. I've gotten so many questions like, what's the math like? What can I expect? What classes? This and that. So we're going to talk everything level one trade school today. Mm. Hot. So let's talk about fees first. If you went to university like I did, you would know that university is hella expensive. It's a lot of money, tuition, living expenses, the books. It's crazy. So for me, when I registered for trade school and I found out it was only $550. Here, take it. Everything, take all my money. $550 to go to trade school? I know it's only eight weeks, but $550? That's crazy to me, that's mind blowing. Um, and like I mentioned in previous videos, I'm with the union, um, IBEW, local 804. So many people have been asking, trying to figure out what local I am, local 804. But if you're with the union, they actually supply your textbook. So it's literally $550 and that's it. Something else you're gonna wanna think about is getting a parking pass. Um, I was a little, little late on mine for applying, but basically you can pay $70 for the eight weeks or you can pay seven bucks a day, which is a lot of money. So get, don't make the mistake I made. I didn't see it in my email, so I missed out on a couple weeks, but just make sure you read all the emails they send you and get the parking permit. Other fees that, um, and things that I didn't know about, no one told me, the union didn't tell me for whatever reason. Um, you actually have to purchase one of these, other than books, it's gonna you're gonna use it for your prints class. I don't know if it's gonna show up, but it's a ruler. You're gonna use it for your prints class. Something else that I wish I knew, because you literally jump into labs like the week of the very first week, you have to buy workbooks, and they're small. They were only five dollars each, so I guess I spent a total of twenty-five dollars. But if you pass trade school and you are in the union, they will reimburse you for this and they will give you some money back for your tuition fees or registration fees based on the percentage you got. Classes, what do you take in level one trade school? So I think, is it six classes that I have? I'm not sure, we're gonna count right now. The first class I have is called instrumentation. And basically this class covers a lot of um, process controls, so um, pressure, heat, uh, what else? Flow measurement, I'll read off a couple, automatic control. I'm only halfway through so I haven't actually learned everything, but for each one of these classes I'll leave a list of the basic things that you can Google just to kind of prep yourself so you don't have anxiety going into it. Because unlike a lot of the guys there, they had um, post-secondary electrical programs and I had nothing. So going into this was very overwhelming. And mind you, this is the order that I had it in, which was very overwhelming and I'll go over that later. I can't find my electronics textbook, but um, the second class I had was electronics. And this was the one that I was so overwhelmed about. If you don't know what it is, it has things, the, some of the topics that it covers is uh, diodes, yeah, where's my textbook? Okay, got it. So soldering, um, meter and resistor color codes. Didn't know what that was. Um, diodes, LEDs, transistors, optocouplers. Still don't know what that is, but yeah, this was the one I was terrified about. Don't know anything about electronics whatsoever. But this was actually ended up being my highest uh, scoring class and I learned a lot, it's a lot of hands-on, it's actually fun. The second class I have is installation methods and I also don't have a textbook for that, but I have a workbook, um, which I will show you guys, but it kind of goes over a lot of, um, well, it's 
So this class is broken into two sections. It's broken into signals and it's broken into residential install. Um, I would say the residential install is more of installing the actual equipment like conduit and um, panels for service, things like that, not dealing with the actual signals or wires or electricity. That's where everything's covered in signals. So in signals you're going to deal with or you're going to actually install four-way switches, three-way switches, um, and you're going to learn how to use relay controls. The next class I have, which kind of ties into electronics, it's electrical theory. So electronics is very hands-on practical things that you'll be using and dealing with in certain areas. And electrical theory is all about the why and how things work. Um, they do go hand in hand, but yeah, this is much more theory based. So for those two classes, a lot of it was overlapping, um, but it's almost more useful to have electrical theory before your electronics class, which mine was opposite, which made it very overwhelming because I went into electronics and he just went straight into talking about diodes and resistors and I didn't even know what those were, what they looked like, looked like what they looked like, what they pertain to, how they were used, and that's what you're going to use or that's what you're going to learn in electrical theory. I can't talk today. The next class I had is um, prints and for that we have this electrical wiring textbook. So in this class you're going to learn all of the like the application of the code book, you're going to learn the basics of wiring a house, what wire you need to use for what devices, um, you're going to learn about boxes, um, the general rules for how many outlets you need, how many lights you need, where you need those things. And a cool part about this class is you actually get, with that textbook, you get these prints. You get these prints and one of your assignments is to actually wire a kitchen. I was lucky it was less overwhelming for me because I had done it before, but you do learn a lot in this class. It's real life knowledge that is very interesting. And this is where you're going to need the special ruler. So on the actual prints, you're gonna see the scale and on the ruler, you'll see the scale that you'll need to um, or the side of the ruler will say that scale and you're going to need this to understand how many feet it actually is because these are only prints. It's a very small scale and you need to be able to transfer that into um, the correct real life measurement. My last and final class is the infamous code book. Look at this thing. It's thick. It's heavy. It's a lot. It's so overwhelming. When you first like look at it, I had up test, so I have a bunch of sticky notes, which I don't know, there's mixed reviews. I posted something on TikTok and people didn't like this, some of them liked it, there's clear ones you could get. Um, yeah, there's lots of options for this, but anyways. Um, this class was so useful, um, but basically you're going to learn how to read the code book because it's so overwhelming, there's so many sections, there's so many rules, it's just, you can go down a rabbit hole trying to find something, but each class is dedicated to one or two sections they go through everything and my biggest advice piece of advice is don't memorize the code book just understand what section pertains to what um, how to read like for the rules for example and I'll show you a close-up now within the rules um, the rule is actually bolded I would pay close attention to these and understand that you want to look for the basic words of the problem you're trying to solve for and then you can continue looking onward into the sub rules like 1 ABC and the Roman rules. Another great thing about the codebook a lot of people were confused about is that this one actually does have an index. Um, a lot of people thought they didn't have an index for whatever reason I saw on TikTok, but this one, the 2021 version, mind you, I'm in Canada, Ontario, this one does have an index. I don't know if this is really a great recommendation, but I did it and made me feel better and helped me just get used to the code book. Um, but my friend actually found a free online version of the code book, which kind of helped me just control find and by doing that, I was able to put things together in my head and find the sections easier. 
Um, you don't want to rely too heavily on this because when you go to write your license, you're not going to have obviously a digital version. You have to have the paper copy and that's all you get. So why was it so overwhelming for me? There's a couple different reasons. The first reason is a lot of the guys in my class had taken a post-secondary electrical course. So they already knew a lot of the stuff. Um, and for me, I knew nothing. The only knowledge, prior knowledge I had was my pre-apprenticeship course and that was like eight weeks in class. Like it, it wasn't a lot whatsoever. Another reason it was so overwhelming for me is because I hadn't been to college in a couple years. So registering alone and trying to navigate the portal and trying to find my timetable and my biggest piece of advice is don't do it on your phone. Make sure you do it on the computer because sometimes your phone blocks the pop-ups that you need to see. Like when I tried to find my calendar, I was trying to find it on my phone and the pop-up for the calendar was not coming up. Oh yeah, definitely do it on your computer. The last and final reason it was so overwhelming was because all of my classes I feel like were reversed, like in the reverse order and it should have been the other way around. So my class was instrumentation, electronics, installation, prints, electrical theory, and then code. But I really do believe it should have been code and then prints and then electrical theory and then electronics, and then installation methods, and then instrumentation, is that all? But it just kind of made sense, like one leads to the other, whereas for me, it was backwards, so it was like the beginning of the week was beyond overwhelming. I was like, I don't know anything, nothing makes sense, nothing is interconnecting, like nothing is leading to the other, like I can't make connections. I was like, I questioned my life for the first week, <laughs> but, don't question your life, you'll get the hang of it, it's not too bad um, once you start piecing the puzzle together. So what is the actual class time like? So because of COVID, I don't think it was because of COVID, but because there's so much to know in the eight weeks, they approach it asynchronous. So they'll do a certain amount of hours in class and then they also do a certain amount of hours online. So it is overwhelming, it is a lot to know you're never going to memorize it all don't try to memorize it like do the work obviously um some of the homework assignments for example i didn't do because i got the hang of it so i didn't feel the need to keep like overwhelming myself with the amount of work and i drove i had to drive an hour to class to begin with an hour there and back so like my day was already longer than it had to be so i skipped corners where i could i don't recommend it but if you're comfortable enough to, with a certain subject or a certain task, then I wouldn't stress too much because some of the assignments aren't even marked, they're just for your own benefit. And last and final question that I get every single time someone DMs me and they find out I'm in level one trade school is the math. They're so scared about the math. And honestly, the math isn't that hard. I almost failed like for perspective i almost failed grade 11 grade 12 functions i think i got like a 63 or lower i remember having to do like night school because i wanted to up my grades again to university which seems very pointless now but if i got 67 in functions and i'm getting 90s now 80s 90s you're fine you're gonna be okay so for example um Ohm's law, which is a lot, but like that's the, that's the most you're gonna use for math, like the most popular, I guess you want to say. Um, but if you know how to use, like, we were given this in class. If you know how to use one of these triangles, like if you cover that, p equals i times e, or if you cover this, i equals p divided by e. Like it's not rocket science. It's not hard to figure out. More often than not, you're given the values that you need, and it's kind of, it's like a puzzle. You just find one to find the other. But if you can do those and plug in numbers to basic calculations, you're fine. You'll be okay. So that I usually use in electronics, electrical theory. Um, another class that you're going to use math in is instrumentation. Um, but again, like it's basic 
it's kind of the same formulas that I just showed you. And usually you're given like these, uh, where is it? Like these, um, you're given these values, for example, that's a uh, weight density of water. That's just a known figure and you use it to plug into basic calculations. So, like I said, I was not a good math student, especially in functions, but I've been passing with flying colors, so I wouldn't worry too much. If you're that worried about it, I would maybe YouTube um, some basic questions or Google some basic questions. I'll, again, I'll leave a list for each class of the basics that you would need to know or that you would want to investigate just so you're not too overwhelmed. So that's my life update halfway through trade school. It's been it's been fun, but I'm I miss the tools. Sad. Uh, I have a couple more weeks left. Maybe at the end I will give you guys an update on the rest of it. Um, I might put together some guidelines for you guys to check out or download. We'll see how much time I have, but just so you're prepared going into it, unlike me. I didn't really have anyone to guide me through this, so I really hope this helps the next person. Again, thank you so much for all the subscriptions, the likes, the comments. I really love interacting with you guys. I love the comments. It makes me happy. It gives me something to look forward to and see. And if this is your first time here, don't forget to like and subscribe. It goes a long way, like I said. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.